Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. It's Thursday in 2023. Thursday is going to be my storytelling day, so let's get right to it. There's a Sufi story that I love. You know, a lot of times we don't understand the relationship between fate and destiny, but you can't run away from your fate, so you might as well face it. Once there was a servant who was given money by his master to go to the bazaar and buy all sorts of goodies for a party they were going to have. And so it was a beautiful sunny day and the servant was jingling the coins in his pocket and just thinking about the wonderful halavar and pistachio and hummus and baba ganoush he was going to get there. As he turns the corner to go into the marketplace, all of a sudden there's death. And they both get a little start like, what? And so the tradition is if death speaks to you, you're dead. So before death can say anything, he skedaddles out of there. His heart is beating. He's racing insanely. He goes back to the house, doesn't say anything to the master, goes to the stable, gets the best horse he can find, and whips that beast insanely to go from where he is in Bokora to Samarkand. He takes the money that the master gave him, buys a room at the inn, goes upstairs, shuts the door, shuts the shutters, lies down in the bed, completely exhausted, psychologically verklempt, and falls asleep. That night, about two o'clock in the morning, the shutters burst open and in comes death. And the servant says, what are you doing here? I thought I left you back in Boca. He says, I know. That's why I was so surprised to see you this morning, because I knew we had an appointment tonight here in Samarkand. Might as well face it. Anyway, for me, I want to also remind you that the Native American shamans in my life have vastly expanded my capacity of heart so that my heart inspires me wherever I go. I always speak about what I love and what I appreciate. And love moves me out of myself to open myself to all form. Some of it's really ugly, but a lot of it's really beautiful and magnificent. So as long as that love can nourish me, animate me, I flourish. And that's why sometimes I discourse all about tenderness and vulnerability. I refuse to press the pause button on my rants about love or spirit. And I let love and the love of spirit rule my purpose. So you don't have to be into it like I am, but I'm going to lavish all my adoration and give my tribute generously to love and to spirit. And I hope you find your way to do that as well. Now, the definition of yoga, according to Swami Satchidananda, and the goal of all integral yoga is a body of perfect health and strength, a mind with all clarity and control, intellect as sharp as a razor, will of steel, heart full of love and mercy, and a life dedicated to the common welfare and the realization of the good God. And why I like yoga so much is that it's an initiation rite. It teaches you through instruction how to face ordeals, and you become a member of the yogic society invested with a certain kind of power. And now you realize through sankalpa or intention you can attain any desired end that you aim at. In other words, you learn how to become successful. You transform your actual appearance, your character. You're starting to change into something in terms of transformation of higher consciousness and perspective. It teaches you to maintain, keep on going, endure, persist over time. And that's what gives you a certain kind of constancy and stability. So I suggest that you all hit the mat, read the books, find a teacher or be an autodidact and teach yourself. But whatever you do, don't stop. The path is very simple. Begin and continue. Don't ever stop.